Over the last several weeks and or years, if we go back to 2017, where it all started, just doing a quick search popped up. Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Argentina, Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Belgium, Egypt, Senegal, Romania, Nigeria, Poland, Ghana, India, Turkey, France, Serbia, Venezuela, Algeria, Cameroon, South Africa, Czechoslovakia, and on and on. All of these central banks have not only been wickedly purchasing gold, but all of them have brought their gold home, all of them. Uh, repatriating it from the Bank of England and the New York Fed. Now, the easy answer is, well, it's um, it's counterparty risk, Danny. That's that's what it right. is. You know, you're stealing stuff from these countries. So, um, you know, we can, as the world reserve currency, make declarations where if Xi Jinping gives one penny to uh, to the Russian war machine, we will sanction their banks, their companies in Beijing itself. That's what Janet Yellen said. But doesn't matter that we've given. F-16 jets, Stinger missiles, the intelligence on where to fire things, and $260 billion in, in funding, much of which was in military equipment with no counter with no congressional oversight. We can do that because we're the world reserve currency. So you know our know what you our you know what doesn't stink. So we can do that. But that level of hypocrisy uh, and sanctioning and confiscating and defaulting, if you will, on five billion in uh, Russian treasuries is um it, it's just too stupid to be stupid but it's not as i think there's more to it i guess is what i'm trying to say and you know last time i was on with you we talked about project embridge project embridge is a cross border payment system <clears throat> it was developed by china hong kong Sing um thailand and the united arab emirates um and now we find out that um the bank of international settlements is is behind this as well. Uh, the BIS is the group that reclaim. Real world asset wealth, how to protect your wealth from the upcoming financial impact. Download this brand new report for free and get instant access to our resources. Click the button below the video now. Classify gold tier one in 2019. And if we go back to 2017, the way that the BIS does things, we see the Bundesbank, Hungary, Turkey, Poland, Austria, the Czech National Bank, the Dutch National Bank, they all repatriated their gold in 2017, really weird out of the clear blue after selling gold for years. In 2018, those same banks bought more gold as a group than they did in the 60 years previously combined. In 2019, that number doubles by 100%. And then they miraculously, the BIS says, oh, by the way, guys, gold is now the only other tier one reserve asset. So if you believe they weren't told about this, I have a bridge to sell you. Now I want you to think about what's been going on over the last two and a half years. Over the last two and a half years, there's been more gold buying by central banks than at any time in human history or in, in central bank history, I guess, to be more accurate. And in 2023, it was the most gold ever bought by the central banks in the first quarter, only to be out uh, outdone by the first quarter 2024. The central banks are increasing their gold purchasing, but they are repatriating their gold as well. Just a few weeks ago, Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt, Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, and South Africa all brought their gold back from the New York Fed. I mentioned that the Bank of India brought back all their gold that they were holding since 1991 at the Bank of England. All of these countries are repatriating their gold. All right, so now let's go back to Project Embridge, which um, we see is a BIS initiative along with China, uh, Hong Kong, Thailand, United Arab Emirates. Saudi Arabia, the largest producer of oil in the world and the head of OPEC, just became a full participant in Project Embridge, which is not compatible with U.S. dollars. It is not compatible with U.S. dollars. And there was a meeting in Russia about three weeks ago in Novograd and then coincided with the G7 meeting in Italy. The Royal Crown Prince was invited to the meeting in um, Italy and he turned it down. Sorry, he said, I can't make it. But he sent his finance ministers to Novograd, to the Russian meeting, the BRICS meeting. And two things come out of this meeting that I think are worth talking about. One massively, one interest. The interesting thing is that 59 countries said we're going to join. Um, we'll find out in October which ones those are. But 59 more countries said we're going to join the BRICS. But the very interesting thing that came out of it was a meeting 
two meetings between uh, Putin, Sergei Glazyev, and Delma Rusov. Everyone knows who Putin is. Uh, Sergei Glazyev is a Russian finance minister, and he's the finance minister to the Eurasian Economic Union. I've been saying for three years, the Eurasian Economic Union and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization will join the BRICS, and they will. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Iran joined, and so did Saudi Arabia. It's the largest regional financial and military organization on the planet. And the Eurasian Economic Union are all the, the countries that end in Stan. And, and they're all either part of the BRICS, part of the Belt Road, or will be soon. And so Glazyev is the guy, the architect of the of the BRICS settlement currency. He's been talking about for three years. He's the one who said it'll be a basket of currencies of the BRICS countries and a basket of commodities. And I've been saying forever, it's it's got to mostly be gold. It's the only other tier one asset, right? It's just, it has to be. So this meeting, uh, the third party was Delma Rousseff. Delma used to be the president of Brazil. Delma is now the president of the BRICS New Development Bank. She came out of this meeting and said it has been decided in principle to a new settlement currency called the unit. And the unit will be traded over Project Embridge. Remember who's behind Project Embridge, including the BIS. Remember the way that they told these countries, obviously, to buy gold and bring it home prior to its reclassification as tier one? Think about all the banks that have been buying gold over the last two and a half years and repatriating it. All right, so now gets the interesting part. It's traded over Embridge, which the U.S. dollar is not compatible with. Saudi Arabia just became a full participant. It will eliminate the ability for the West to sanction. The unit currency, as announced, will be a basket of 60% local currencies of the BRICS Plus nations, 40% gold, deliverable in kilo bars. All the gold that's been delivered off of COMEX it's in kilo bars. Um, and what's interesting, <clears throat> maybe the most interesting part about it, remember all these countries have been saying and repatriating their gold? The unit currency will be a, a, a token that will be minted in each country. 40% gold, 60% basket of local BRICS plus currencies. That gold, which will comprise 40% of the, of the token and the currency are taken out of circulation and put into a, like, in essence, an escrow account within the borders of the countries who possess the gold. 